Hi, thanks for joining me on this channel here, which is about image processing, image analysis, some science chat and, and other stuff. I'm going to break all the rules of YouTube in this one because I'm making a video here that absolutely nobody has asked me to do. But it's a neat little trick that hopefully you might find useful. So the image that you're looking at here is one of the first image analysis routines that I was ever shown by an old friend, Matt Nielsen, who I worked with many years ago. You'll see in box one, we have a very grainy, poor quality image. It's a cell expressing some receptors, a very low concentration of the drug, and so the image quality is not great. But the but the drug concentration needs to be low in order to maintain cell activity. Okay, long story, but we've got a noisy image. We go through a process of making a mask and then extracting the data under the mask. And then if you look at box six, you'll see I'm able to construct a really rather nice uh, 3D model of what was previously pretty poor quality image. So how do we do it? Here's a fairly poor quality image. It uh, doesn't matter what it is, but you can see that there are some objects in there. What we could do is we could enhance the contrast. Here's a copy of the image. Let me just enhance contrast and we'll do a normalize. We won't bother equalizing the histogram, but it's not too bad. Okay. So that would work. But remember that if you are measuring intensity in an image, if these were cells expressing some kind of something, um, you would not want to now be measuring this image because you have changed the values. That's very important. But we can use this image to extract information from this image. Okay. So we will use the enhanced image and we will threshold it. Oh, do you know? Let's low pass it first. Let's just smooth it. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. Okay, once we've smoothed it, let's now threshold it. Uh, yeah, it seems to have defaulted to the yen because that's what I was using last. There's a default one. You can play around, try to find whichever parameter suits you. Um, I think the yen one looked quite good. Not too bad. Maybe give a wee tweak. Maybe a bit there. Okay, let's just take that. I apply that. I end up with a binary image, which I'm going to use as a mask to extract data from the original image. But I don't want all of these single pixels that are lying around here. So I will erode this binary image. So make sure my image is selected. And I'm going to binary, I'm going to erode. You see it cleans up a lot of the noise. But having eroded the objects, I need to do a dilation. I need to add another round of pixels around the perimeter just to bring the image back to something close to what it should look like. So if you do an erosion, it takes single pixel off or more off the objects. If you dilate, it adds the pixels back in. Okay. Now I've got a nice binary mask that I'm going to use on this image. How do I do that? I'll go process, uh, binary, where is it? Math. Oh, where did I put it? Oh, sorry, image calculator. Still early morning here. Um, so my image one will be my mask. So that's row three dot pick. And my original image is row two. And I want to have a new image which contains everything which is in my right hand image and my left hand image. So where the mask, the binary image overlaps with the original image, I will get a combination image where, where there is information from both images. So pixels which are in image one and pixels which are in image two. Let's just create it, see what we get. There we go. So we have used this binary mask to cut out this data. We want to make sure that the intensity values haven't changed. So let's just quickly 
change the lookup table, let's use a 16 color ramp. Here we'll use a 16 color ramp. Uh, let's zoom in on, yeah, maybe this one here. Okay, and get the same thing here. If the values haven't changed, we should be seeing exactly the same pattern of pixels. And I think you can see quite clearly if I find an area. Yeah, look there. There you go. Okay, slightly different magnification here, but I think you can see anywhere you look, you'll you'll see the same the same pattern of pixels. So the intensity hasn't changed. All that's happened is we've used a binary mask to cut out our objects and now we can do uh, an intensity measure and we have basically we've basically created a cookie cutter. Alright, hope you found that useful.